Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Zangief or Poison from Street Fighter, and like and subscribe for more animal buddies next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Grey Cloud, better known as Nightwolf, a dude with green magic energy like Johnny Cage, but unlike Johnny Cage, he isn't a total jerk, and also he's friends with animals, so he's better in every way. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need some magical green weapons, almost like they're an extension of yourself. Next, we need to understand them all the animals, making good friends with the spirits so they'll lend a hand them all. Finally, we need the lightning, calling down light from the sky to put heavy damage on the baddies. For stats, we'll be using the standard pointer from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure you're watching those multi-classing minimums. Wisdom will be number one. If you're conjuring weapons and connecting to spirits, you need a natural connection. Dexterity next, you've got plenty of speed and get things done with a bear chest in addition to a bear fist like the fist of a bear strength after that you have the strength of a bear in addition to the bear fist like a fist of a bear again follow that up with constitution dumping constitution in mortal combat is pretty much guaranteeing you're gonna get turned into a shish kebab intelligence is a bit low we just need other stuff more and we'll dump charisma you're a pretty stoic guy nothing wrong with that but you're probably not gonna be doing an open mic night anytime soon nightwolf is a human so naturally we're gonna build him using custom lineage grab the skill expert feat to round up your wisdom score get athletic skills and expertise with the athletic skill to double your proficiency bonus when you need to lift stuff we won't be able to have the ability scores to invest in strength so this is our way to make sure that you're able to suplex a terminator use your two free points to round your wisdom up even higher plus four at level one is absolutely bonkers and we'll make the most of it right away grab animal handling for your skill of choice and take the hermit background for medicine and religion proficiency to get that whole shaman thing going for two more great skills kick things off as a druid you get survival and perception proficiency if you want them you you should want them they're good skills you also learn druidic a language of druids that only druids can speak at the nether realm mixer it will let you talk hot gossip with poison ivy and swamp thing cantrips and spells are the best thing about druid level one though including shillelagh which is almost as fun to use as it is to say this turns a quarter staff into a shillelagh making it use your wisdom modifier for attack and damage rolls and it deals a d8 whether it's in one hand or two maybe the green energy you put into it makes it look like a tomahawk who's to say you are it's your spell guidance gives a creature a d for for their next ability check since it's a cantrip you can just cast it at will to do everything a little bit better as long as you've got the time for your first level spells speak with animals as you speak with animals for 10 minutes so you could even go to the zoo for hot gossip if you want animal friendship makes the animals more likely to share their gossip forcing a wisdom saving throw on them and charming them for 24 hours if they fail it ends early if your friends attack them though but if your friends attack your pets they're not really your friends we'll also scoop up the mobility duo jump and long strider jump triples your jump distance long strider makes you run 10 feet faster that should help you get in close with your shillelagh to do a little rhino charge second level druids get wild shape letting you turn into a beast of challenge rating one fourth or lower as an action you keep your soft stats like intelligence wisdom and charisma but get the beast physical stats so strength dexterity and constitution you can stay in this shape for a number of hours equal to half your druid level or until the beast runs out of hp since you can use it twice a day if you want to use it to be a wolf get 22 extra hp per day and you can be a wolf if that's not your speed why not choose the circle of stars druid circle letting you choose a star form by spending your wild shape if you choose the archer you can shoot a radiant green arrow that deals 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier as a bonus action if you choose the chalice whenever you heal a creature you can give another creature 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier in healing including yourself if you want a little regeneration factor though i don't know how in character that is the final option is dragon dragons can't roll lower than a 10 on an intelligence check wisdom check or concentration save not that you have concentration spells yet you will eventually this lets you pick what kind of night wolf you want to be including a version that's a literal wolf you also get starry map giving you the guiding bolt spell to fire a range spell attack that deals 4d6 radiant damage and gives the next creature attacking them advantage you could actually make that you with your bonus action arrow you have a free number of guiding bolts equal to your proficiency bonus then can cast the spell with spell slots it's a solid first level option third level druids can get second level spells enhance ability lets you give a creature advantage on skill checks of a certain type if you choose strength they also double their carrying capacity if you choose dexterity they don't take falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less and if you choose constitution they get 2d6 temporary hp i normally skip the part where they define that you're getting extra power from an animal spirit bears bulls cats eagles foxes or owls but that's pretty important to your character so it's worth mentioning the buff lasts for an hour depending on your concentration so try and anticipate what you're going to need moonbeam calls down a pillar of light in a five foot radius with a 40 foot height forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures inside and dealing 2d 10 radiant damage to those that fail half as much to those that succeed it hangs out for a minute depending on your concentration so you could use your expertise to athletics to grapple someone inside then pummel them while you 
Kuckerman Moonlight. Summon Beast lets you summon a beast of the land, the air, or the sea. You command it with your bonus action and it hangs out for an hour depending on your concentration. The stats are in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. It's much easier to understand reading it than it would be for me to try and explain it in audio. It's nice. Who doesn't want a pet friend? Fourth level druids get another ability score improvement cap off your wisdom right away for maximum moonlight and spiritual weapons, but not literally spiritual weapon. That's a cleric spell. I was trying to make this work with cleric mostly so that I could spell cleric with K's in the graphics, but it just didn't click, mostly because we need call lightning and we'd have to be a tempest cleric for that. Then we couldn't get any animal spells. It, come, it becomes a whole thing. Hey, speaking of call lightning, fifth level druids can learn call lightning because that's a third level spell that druids get. This creates a storm cloud in a 10 foot tall, 60 foot radius, 100 feet above you. While it's there, you can use your action to call down a five foot radius blast of lightning that deals 3d10 lightning damage to creatures that fail a dexterity saving throw half as much on a success. If it's already stormy when you cast the spell, you can add another d10 of lightning damage. It lasts for 10 minutes depending on your concentration. So if you want to, you could spam lightning and spirit arrows to be an effective zoner. Conjure animals lets you summon animals, one of challenge rating two or lower, two of challenge rating one or lower, four of challenge rating one half or lower, or eight of challenge rating one fourth or lower. They count as fey and help you out for up to an hour depending on your concentration. If this seems similar to summon beasts, that's because it is. This just summons a lot of beasts. You get a whole dog sled worth of puppers to help you out. That would be so wholesome. Then rip someone's jaw down to their belly button and have your dogs eat their organs. That's less wholesome. Sixth level star druids get a cosmic omen putting your shaman skills to work to make you and your allies better or make your enemies worse. Roll a die at the start of a long rest. If you roll an even number, you get to wheel all day. And if you roll an odd number, you get to woe. Wheel gives you a d6 you can add to an ally's ability check, attack roll, or saving throw as a reaction. Woe lets you subtract a d6 from an enemy's ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. You have an amount of these d6s equal to your proficiency bonus, so you can help your whole tribe do better or just make Robocop worse. God, these games are getting weird with the DLC. Seventh level druids can learn four level spells polymorph lets you turn a creature into a beast of challenge rating equal to or less than its current level if they don't want to perform an animality they can just make a wisdom saving throw to resist i personally think it's best to use it on yourself dire wolves are the biggest wolves but giant ape is also an option it's not in character but it would be cool whoever you're anamorphing into it lasts for an hour depending on your concentration i just realized if you go dragon constellation giant ape the lowest your concentration save will be is a 14 meaning unless the enemy does more than 28 damage to you in a single attack it stays up automatically again not in character but dragon ape you are kong and godzilla at the same time freedom of movement makes a creature immune to any effect that would slow them down including paralyzation or restraint you can break out of non-magical shackles with five feet of movement helping you break out of grapples for an hour dominate beast forces a wisdom saving throw on a beast failing that you control them for an hour even taking direct control if you want to with an action sounds a little harsh for me though i'd stick with friendship eight level druids get another ability score improvement helping us get our dexterity modifier up before we start multi-classing which we need to do at this point we have all of your shaman stuff all of your magical stuff you're pretty stellar at all that but Currently, you're still kind of bad at fighting. We really stuck it out here so you can wild shape into a dire wolf instead of a regular wolf. A dire wolf is just like a normal wolf, but more dire. First level monks are better at fighting, thanks to martial arts, letting you make unarmed attacks that use your dexterity modifier. Deal a 1d4 plus your dexterity modifier, and you can make an unarmed attack as a bonus action after making a monk weapon or unarmed attack as your action. A monk weapon is any simple melee weapon without the heavy or two-handed property. A hand axe fits the build, so now you can use your dexterity modifier for your hand axe. No more shillelagh reflavoring necessary even though it's actually still better keep using shillelagh you can't use martial arts while wearing armor that's why you get unarmored defense making your ac 10 plus your dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor thanks to your incredible wisdom investment that means you get plus 5 ac at this level also worth noting wild shapes can use any abilities that shape is capable of using that you get from other classes so you can use martial arts and unarmored defense as a dire wolf just know that the bite attack isn't an unarmed attack just because it's an attack you're not making with a weapon it's all weird. Multiclassing is weird. Monk is weird. Druid is weird. And mixing all that stuff together makes it all weirder, but you can figure it out. I believe in you. Second level monks get key points they can use to do cool shaman stuff like step of the wind to let you dash or disengage as a bonus action and double your jump distance for the round. Pair this with jump for a 24 foot vertical leap or a 78 foot horizontal leap, which is basically a flying speed. Patient defense lets you dodge as a bonus action for getting to block until you're halfway through the game is how I play Mortal Kombat, so this feels like a personal attack. Flurry of blows lets you make two unarmed attacks instead of one with your bonus action. Don't be afraid to burn a little meter. Remember, they can't hit you if they're dead. You also get 
unarmored movement, making you faster when you're not wearing armor. You can pair this with long strider to go really, 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 really fast. Third level monks get to choose a monastic tradition, and since you arm yourself with astral energy, be an astral self monk to get arms of the astral self. This will just spend a key point to force a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius, dealing double your martial arts die and force damage to those that fail. It also gives you some spectral arms that have some fun bonuses for 10 minutes. He'll let you use your wisdom modifier for strength checks and saves. Your unarmed attacks have 10 feet of range instead of 5, and you can use your wisdom modifier for your unarmed attacks instead of strength or dexterity and deal force damage. I know you make a green tomahawk, but technically you're not holding anything physical, so it would deal force damage, not slashing damage. Boom, logic. You can also deflect missiles, letting you reduce damage of incoming ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and monk level. If you drop it down to zero, you can even send it back by spending a key point. You can make projectiles bounce off your chest. This won't work on fireballs, but we'll get something for that soon, I promise. Have I ever lied to you? Other than that thing with Goku and Scott Pilgrim and Gandalf. Four level monks get slow fall, letting you reduce falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction. Landing safely is tricky, but it's easier when you're friends with birds. You also get an ability score improvement, get your dexterity up for better unarmored defense and unarmed attacks when you run out of your anchor arms. Fifth level monks get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action and up to four with a flurry of blows. You can also use your astral arms for all of those to get a nasty wise combo going. Your monk die also bumps up to a d6 here, making it deal a little bit more damage. This level also gives you stunning strike, letting you spend a key point to force a constitution saving throw on a creature you hit with a weapon attack failing that they're stunned until the end of your next turn helping you extend that combo a little bit longer six level monks get key empowered strikes making all of your unarmed attacks magical in terms of overcoming resistances you're mostly using the astral arms and that's force damage but this can be nice if you run out that means you've been fighting a lot in one day though so hopefully it doesn't come up that often you also get visage of the astral self letting you spend another key point when you activate your astral arms that'll give you 120 feet of perfect dark vision advantage on insight and intimidation checks and you can whisper secrets to someone 60 feet away for hot gossip or make your voice really really loud i'm more of a gossip fan than a shouter personally rumor has it that johnny and sonya are going through a rough patch yikes seventh level monks get evasion letting you take half damage on failed deck saves and no damage on successful ones making those projectiles even less effective you also get stillness of mind letting you remove an effect of charming or frightening which could be useful he fought a guy who likes to pull his mask off and show you his spooky skeleton face eighth level monks get another ability score improvement cap off your dexterity for 20 base ac and perfect punches without dropping any resources conservation is pretty important reduce reuse recycle you know ninth level monks get unarmored movement improvement letting you move up walls and over water without falling Falling in when you're not wearing armor as long as you end up somewhere solid letting you climb walls like a spider does nightwolf have a connection to insects insects are animals just in case let's say lemurs lemurs are good climbers be night lemur 10th level monks get purity of body making you immune to poison and disease which should help you turn yourself into a wolf and fight kano i think that dude's blood is made of moonshine he's just He's just an icky person. 11th level astral self monks get body of the astral self, another incentive to use both arms and visage. When you have both pieces up, you can deflect energy, letting you reduce damage from acid, cold, fire, force, lightning, or thunder damage by 1d10 plus your wisdom modifier as a reaction, which should cover every projectile in the game. No spamming, only hamming. That's assuming that you've made friends with a pig. You also get empowered arms to add an extra martial arts damage die to one hit per round from your astral arms attacks. That die is a d8 now, so a standard three hit combo from you is 4d8 plus 15 force damage. This is where I tell you to break character and grab hold person from the druid list. Paralyzed creatures are automatically critically hit, so you can double those die and deal some serious damage. Our capstone is the 12th level of monk, and we don't need anything else, so grab the tough feet for 40 extra HP. Nothing wrong with that. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is first you can shut down so much damage pretty much any ranged attack you'll be able to neutralize not to mention 20 base ac for them to have to hit before you even start lowering the damage you're also solid at dealing damage from any range with starry archer abilities from far away and astral arms up close you sort of get to pick how you want to fight finally you're fast with big mobility options to get you where you need to go for weaknesses we avoided some stuff that would make you even better you didn't grab a healing spell you could have then you could regenerate like wolverine the superhero not the animal Animal. You also didn't grab Hold Person, which would make your flurious monk attacks deal way more damage and help you keep up with giant combos everyone else is pulling off in the tournament. Finally, your charisma's low, meaning that you're going to have trouble negotiating without violence. So it's a good thing that you're very good at violence. Get in, stay out, do whatever you want to, honestly. You're just about the most well-rounded battler we've ever had. Just get someone else to do the talking or get comfortable with the idea of a cage match. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for Zangief or Poison from Street Fighter and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.